from the newsroom. Only nine days left until Christmas Day. Shoppers are stretching their dollars while charitable giving is up. Meanwhile, the Great War heats up in Europe and volunteers are needed for Red Cross aid to war-torn countries. And here at home, the annual Tree of Light program premieres tonight as children from local orphanages celebrate Christmas. Adoptions are available. Sing 
Merry Christmas and welcome to our third annual Tree of Light program right here in Madison Square. The boys and girls of Miracle Street Orphanage are eager to show you what they've learned. So put aside your worries for a few minutes because the season of hope is upon us. Christmas is coming. in America. Christmas is the only holiday celebrated by the whole world. In Holland, children put on their wooden shoes. In Mexico, Las Posadas is celebrated with piñatas and fireworks. In New Zealand, families go to the beach. And in Kenya, trees are decorated with streamers and balloons. 
The Welsh people make taffy and have sing contests. In Chinese families decorate with paper chains, flowers, and red pagodas. The British Canadian children eat plum pudding and listen to the Queen's speech. And children in Germany make advent wreaths. Why does the whole world celebrate? Because Christmas is a time of new hope. Hey, maybe this year I'll be adopted. But you know what? Christmas is really about love all over the whole wide world. Standing at the window, watching people hurry, hearing all the bells ring, it's getting closer to Christmas. Do you read the paper? Will there be snow this year? Send it down our everyone who had to pay taxes. So a very nice man named Joseph went to sign up for the tax. He took his sweet wife Mary who was going to have a baby. Only it wasn't Joseph's baby, it was God's baby. And so the days were accomplished and she should be delivered because poor Mary is about to pop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but when they came to Bethlehem, there was no room for them in the inn. So Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swollen clothes and put him in a manger. Wow. And then in the same country, shepherds in the field, keeping watch over the flocks by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone about them, and they were petrified. 
But the angel said to them, Fear not, be good tidings of great joy. Unto you is born in the state, and the son of David, the Savior who is Christ the Lord. So when the angels went back to heaven, the shepherds looked at one another and said, and said, Yo, get up! Something's going on down in Bethlehem! Once. Cease the music immediately. Are you Mrs. Eugenia Fowlhurst, Director of Miracle Street Orphanage? I am. What's this about? I'm an Anthony Livermore, Commissioner for the City of New York. You are in violation of the Neutrality Clause, just voted into the city's bylaws. Whereas the tree situated in Madison Square is representative of all peoples and nations, it has been deemed proper that henceforth any music and narration must be of a neutral form. This censorship applies to all programs, venues, and performers, etc., etc. You must cease your program immediately. Wait a minute. You can't do this. Mr. Livermore, this is such a great opportunity for our children. Can't you find it in your heart to allow us to finish our program? It isn't a matter of the heart. It is a matter of the law, madam. Sir, this is America. Speech is a basic freedom. Not on public property. Now, are you willing to leave peacefully? Or shall I get this fine public servant to enforce the law? Why, you, this is an outrage, and we will not and a stand, stand against the law. We will close out our program. But let me ask you a question, Mr. Livermore. Didn't your lovely wife sing often at the First Congregational Church? Well, yes, but she, Mary, has tuberculosis. She will never sing again. Oh, I'm truly sorry. I will always hear her voice in my heart and pray for her full recovery. Well, thank you, Mrs. Falhurst. Now, I must be going. Sir, if you will allow it, we'd like to do one last song and dedicate it to you and your wife. Oh, I don't. Oh, I shouldn't. All right. She would be singing with you if she could. But just one song. And no more performances here. Thank you, Mr. Livermore. I'm sure Mary is very proud of you. Now, everyone, let's repeat the sounding joy with all our might. Christmas is coming. Get your papers here, late edition, New York Times, only 10 cents. The German fleet shells England. 15 nations involved in the Great War. Fleeing aliens pour into Ellis Island. Only neutral airs for Tree Festival. Hey, then we just don't have the same punch. Do it. You know, things like this may not seem bad, but they will change our country, and not for the better. Down with neutral ads. Yeah! Hey, wh wh what's a neutral air? The kind that don't have no smell. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. No, an air is a song. A neutral air is music that doesn't support any particular idea or belief. Yeah! What she said. Oh dear, we were scheduled to have two more presentations. The Tree of Light is our biggest fundraiser. What are we going to tell the children? I don't know. 
Miss Rose, Casey, the children have been asking for you all afternoon. Dad and I have been working extra hours because of all the people coming to America. They're trying to escape the war. Just think of all the people you're helping. Dad says that helping others is kind of like giving a gift to yourself. <laughs> well, he's right. And you're just in time to help three new boys over there who can't wait to meet Casey Jones, the orphan who could. Let's go. Okay. Without donations from the Tree of Light, the orphanage will run out of funds. Yes, dear, I've been thinking about I that. Promised and I promised Mrs. Pierpont I would buy toys for the Italian day school. Well, if you'll just listen, And I'd I... arrange to have 35 baby blankets delivered to St. Joseph's Hospital next week. Yes, but Eugenia... Not I... to mention gifts for the orphans of Miracle Street. There'll be no candy for the newsboys, no Christmas. This is a disaster. We'll never be able to get the money that... All right, then. As you were. I've been trying to tell you. This is Miss Vera Settles, your new secretary. My what? Yes, she's a graduate of Brooklyn Secretarial School, and her references are superb. Eugenia... You want to help everyone, and while that's noble, it's wearing you out. You need help. So I decided to surprise you. Oh, you won't be sorry, Mom. I'm very efficient, very punctual, and I'm a very odd worker. Yes, and you're very humorous <laughs> and strong. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> um, Owen, this is all fine and good, but... I still have to figure out what to do about Christmas. Well, you know, pardon me, Mum, but you know, a lot of times, just having a little bit of faith and waiting a bit will make up the difference. The children will understand. Well, I appreciate all of you trying to lift my spirits, but right now we need solutions. With a little bit of faith, we can do it. With a little bit of hope, come what may And no matter what the test, we we'll might get through it It's not hard to see the answers on its way With a little bit of faith, we can do it That's better! With a little bit of hope, come what may I think she's got it! No matter what the test, we'll make it through it Tell me why! It's not hard to see the answers on its way
orphans need some place to sing, Dad. What do you think? Well, let's give it a go. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, have you heard? There'll be no more programs for Christmas. Yes, Casey told us. But actually, your setback may be a blessing in disguise. Excuse me? Well, I've been running the train station at Ellis Island since May. And we have more immigrants coming in now than ever before. <laughs> oh, I like where this is going. Carry on. So the Commissioner of Immigration would like to have a Christmas Eve celebration for several hundred of the immigrants who've been detained there. There's a large tree decorated in the Grand Hall and a nice meal planned, but we need a program. You have a program, so we were thinking maybe you well, might... Well, we'll do it. it! Hold on. This is all fine and good, but will it help us raise the funds we need? Unfortunately, I can't offer any payment for this. It doesn't matter. By doing something for people who have no way to give back, it's showing a little bit of faith. Well, what do you say, Mrs. Falhurst? Are you in? We're all in, Mr. Falhurst. Come on. This island is now at peak capacity as hundreds of Europeans are fleeing the war. In New York, Christmas gifts are being delivered to detained aliens as food and toys are distributed to more than 2,000 immigrants on Ellis Island. Jacob Rogers. Uh, Rogenstein, sir. Spell that, please. R O G. Look, e never mind. Let's just keep this simple. Your name is now Jacob Rogan. Much easier to remember. But my name is Rogenstein. Next. Please move to the next line. Hello, sir. Can I help you? Uh, do you work here? Oh, no. But I've been detained here for six months. I know this place backward and forward. Uh, they can't keep you here for that long? Oh, some of us have been here a year or more. So I'm pretty blessed. They lost my papers, so I wait. By the way, my name's Maggie. Maggie McPherson. Uh, did they change your name too? Oh, no. But see that wee man over there? His name was Leonard Yaroshalmi. And they changed it to Leon Yoris. It happens a lot. What's a person to do? This is not the America I dreamed about. Already, my name, my heritage, it is gone. Oh, stop your whining. They can't take your heritage away from you. That's who you are in here. Besides, look about. We've got good company. They feed us well. Indoor plumbing, do you ever see the like? <laughs> now, I don't know about you. But that's a lot better than what I came from. I did not want to leave my home. In the war, it gave me no choice. I didn't get your name. Jacob uh, Rogenstein. Well, now it is uh, Jacob Rogan. A fine name, Mr. Rogan. A Jewish name. You know the Bible, then. The law and the prophets, of course. I have studied them all my life. Oh, then you'll be known about lamentations. Such a sad book, but right in the middle, a lovely promise. The unfailing love of the Lord never ends. Great is his faithfulness. His mercy begins fresh every day. Do you believe that? Well, I do not. Oh, I do. That's what keeps me going. I'll be seeing you soon. 
and I'll say a prayer for you, Mr. Rogan. I was a watchmaker. As the soldiers came, I was cast out of my home into a strange land. But we are many, my friend. And <laughs> we are not alone. A Messiah, King of the Ages, Yahweh, hear our pleas. Promised by the prophets and sages, come and set your people free. Come, Messiah, King of the Ages, Yahweh, hear our pleas. Promised by the prophets and sages, come and set your people free. Years of silence and waiting, endless prayers and tears, longing, anticipation, come and end our fears. Come, Messiah. Today's paper, over one million immigrants have arrived on our shores this year, most of them through Ellis Island. The war abroad is forcing them to leave in masses. I'm so glad President Wilson has decided to keep us out of all that. In the end, Alton thinks we may not have a choice. Well, let's talk about something we do have a choice about. The paper says here that toys will be given to all the children staying on Ellis Island. Yes, and they're being donated by Mr. Rothwell. Oh, dear, dear man. Oh, Hollingsworth, we're quite ready for the tea and cakes. Where is he? Hollingsworth, where is he? Oh, my. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. Holmes! Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Madame Eugene. <laughs> he fancies himself to be Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Those dreadful magazines will be the ruin of this country. Uh, now, Rose, Retta and I have a great surprise. We've arranged a baby shower for you one month from today. It was going to be a surprise shower, but with Nathan away, well, we decided to spring it on you now. It will give you something to look forward to. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. So, have you heard anything from Mr. Jericho? No, um, but he said getting letters out would be difficult. Oh, I almost wish I'd never told him about the relief effort by the Red Cross. Please don't feel badly. We'd been married a year and a half and there'd been no children. We both felt like he should go and help get food to the people in Belgium and we didn't even know about the baby when he left. He was only going for six months, right? Yes, but um, war broke out and transports were canceled. Oh, according to today's post, over 120,000 Americans can't get out of Europe. Terrible, just terrible. Oh, but I'm sure Nathan is just fine. Absolutely. <laughs> of course he is. I'm sure he can just walk in that door at any <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I arrived just in time. I'm bringing you ladies some homemade joy. <laughs> Hi there, Ollie. Uh, Rose, Retta, this is Miss Vera Settles, my new secretary. 
I'm very pleased to meet you. Uh, Miss Settles, you're not required to cook. Oh, no, but I wanted to whip up something special for you. My grandmother's recipe from the old country to thank you for hiring me on. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Jericho are here to help with the details of our Christmas Eve program. Oh, it's already done. <coughs> now, let's see. Using the budget Mr. Owen gave me, I've arranged for a box of candy and a lovely pin to be given to all the ladies, a bag of apples, nuts, raisins, and oranges for each family, greens to decorate the grand doll, and yes, I've spoken to the ministers of the surrounding churches, and they are bringing missionaries and interpreters. Excellent, Miss Settles. Amazing work. I'm already wondering what I ever did without you. Why don't you join us, Miss Settles? Oh, I'd be very happy to. Uh, of course. <laughs> Hollingsworth, you may serve the cake. <laughs> what did you say? Yes, well, you'll see. Oh, lovely cake. <laughs> just, just a minute, ladies. Uh, Mr. Ollie, I have a feeling we're going to be great chums. <laughs> Henrietta, please say how have you been in Spanish? Oh, uh, como, como. Yes, how have you been? Oh. Como frijoles. <laughs> no, that is not correct. Oh, beans. Let's try political history. David, six years ago, the image of Abraham Lincoln was put on the penny. What does the inscription over it say? Give me liberty or give me breath. You just misquoted Patrick Henry. Try again. What is written over Lincoln's face? If I were to face, would I be wearing this one? <laughs> oh, never mind. What, he really said that? What is going on here? I'm afraid the children have a fatal case of holiday fever. <laughs> then let's take a short break. Thank you, Mrs. Oglesby. Miss Rose, tell us about the green carousel, please. Again, aren't you tired of hearing about that? Do you think we might actually get to see one someday? Positively. When I was a little girl, I couldn't sleep for days just thinking about the grand carousel. I would ride the sleek black charger or the growling tiger. I'd grab the big brass ring and win the prize. Start from the very beginning. Tell us everything. <laughs> Once, when I was a very little girl, my teachers took us to see the grand carousel. Everyone on Miracle Street went. We passed F.A.O. Schwartz on the way, and what did I see in the window but a gigantic carousel with blinking lights and wild animals? But that was just the beginning.
Just five more minutes, children. Can we stop now, Miss Rose? There's only two days left until we get to Ellis Island. That's right. So finish well. Five more minutes. Miss Rose, when we go to Ellis Island, will we see the new Colossus? What's a Colossus? It's a large monument. The new Colossus was a gift from France. It's a sign of freedom and international friendship. It's very close to Ellis Island, so yes, Maddie, we will see it. Her name is Lady Liberty. That statue in New York Harbor, that's not a lady. That's Christopher Columbus. It's not. It's to oh, David. <laughs> Who told you that was Christopher Columbus? What are the newsboys? Well, he's playing tricks on you. The statue is indeed Lady Liberty. I've heard she weighs over 225 tons, and her mouth is over three feet wide. I guess you were right. Anything with a mouth that big has to be a girl. All right, children, let's clear your spaces. It's time for music, and be nice. Mrs. Jericho, I'm so sorry. We just didn't know where else to go. Oh, no, please, come in. One of the cooks found this child hiding in the kitchens at Ellis Island. Here, let me have a look. Oh, you're a little girl, aren't you? And when we get all this dirt off, we'll find a very pretty one, too. No! Oh, shh, it's all right. We're your friends. No one knows how long she's been hiding, and so far no one's claimed her. Until we know who she is, she needs to be taken care of. I want to take her to our home, but the commissioner badly needs our help on Ellis today. You did the right thing. She'll be fine here until we can find her mother. Lillian? Is that your name, sweetheart? Lillian? Lillian. Oh, come here, little one. Everything will come around. You'll see. You can rest now. You're safe. Let's get her a hot bath and clean clothes and get her something to eat. She's almost asleep now. We are in your debt, Miss Jericho. Poor little thing. She reminds me of my sister. You grew up in this orphanage, didn't you? Yes. My sister and I were very close, but she was adopted when I was 10 years old, and I've never heard from her again. I've been searching for her. Miss Rose, try not to think about that too much right now. Oh, you're right. I, I am so blessed with these children, and it's Christmas, such a lovely time of year. I... Did you know my sister's name was Lillian? Oh, now, now, don't start weeping here. Uh, Christmas should be a happy time, don't you think? <laughs> Sometimes memories, especially happy ones, make me cry. That's all right, isn't it? We can cry for the ones we love in a good way, and why not at Christmas? I can only imagine how you feel. Blessings sometimes have two sides, and the heart just gets caught in the middle. of memories of years gone by and sometimes Christmas makes me cry I think of soldiers across the sea sometimes I wonder why it's them instead of me for my freedom, they give their lives, and sometimes Christmas makes me cry. Mary and the virgin birth 
And I'm amazed by how much God thinks we are worth That he would send his only son to die And sometimes Christmas makes me morning, isn't it? Rose, I'm just making sure our music program is ready. Music? I love some rousing tunes. Will they sing it for us? Oh, well, they'd be delighted. The children love having an audience. Oh, I just love music, don't you, Mr. Ollie? Some about it just moves me. Me too. <laughs> we could all use a little bit of faith right now. Leah, you and Jalisa, let's sing your song. Don't give up, don't give in When the going's tough, that's just when faith kicks in Well, the Lord will see you through Yes, he's watching over you Night and day, he's telling you to keep the faith So don't give up, don't give up Don't give in, don't give in When the going's tough, that's just when
Brogan. Happy Christmas Eve to you, sir. I uh, have not seen you in a few days. Oh, I've been clattering about, meeting the most interesting people. That is nice, uh, if you will excuse me. Oh, take Clara Steen over there. Do you know how she learned to speak English? By reading a book someone gave her called The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Oh, and Norman over there. Uh, he was standing next to me when the Pretoria sailed into New York Harbor. He pointed to the Statue of Liberty and said, that means I am free. Why are you telling me this? Because, Jacob, every one of us came here searching for some type of freedom. And if you can't be free in here, you might as well go back from where you came. What about you, Miss McPherson? What kind of freedom are you seeking? A new place to start over. I believe my calling's to be somebody's angel. Angel? But I'll real... be known I'm not a real angel, and you're about to be touched by an angel. <laughs> now, do you want to hear my story, or no? Uh, please, do go on. Several Christmas Eve passed. I was engaged to a young pastor. We got on like bread and butter. My Patrick loved the Lord with all his heart. When anybody said, that boy reminds me of Jesus, he would smile bright and big as the sun and say, that's what I'm here for. What happened, Maggie? Seamus McGinty, that's what. Oh, he went to the pub almost every night, drinking until he fell over. Christmas Eve passed, my Patrick and I were going about handing out food baskets, when here come Seamus, stumbling out of the pub, right in the middle of a street, in front of an oncoming carriage. Well, there was no time to stop it, but my Patrick never hesitated. And after all the screaming and noise, it was unnatural quiet. The snow started falling. Seamus was lying against the curb, sleeping like a baby, and my Patrick was gone. I am very sorry. Don't be sorry for me. By that one act, my Patrick changed the whole town. At his service, the sounds of praise to God filled up the church, just like he would have wanted. And Seamus quit his drinking and got his family back. And you? And me. I have hope. If I can change just one person's life, then my life counts, and not for my sake, but for the Lord's. They say this is the best time of the year. And for most of us, that's probably how it feels. But what about the ones left Somebody. 
this time. People need love and we all are able. May I have your attention, please? The Department of Immigration has planned a special Christmas Eve program for everyone who's been detained on the island. We have a wonderful program with gifts and even a feast right here in the Grand Hall. So, gather your families and we'll begin in just a few moments. And who is this lovely young lady? No. It can't be. Is this the little girl I carried out of the kitchen two days ago? <laughs> she's still shy, but overall she's much better. Alton Jones, I've been looking everywhere for you. Oh, Lily, aren't you just the most beautiful little girl I've ever seen? Do we know anything more about her? Not a thing. It's likely her parents were sent back and they were separated. We're still working on it. Has she spoken yet? No. Well, the only words she's spoken are Lily and no. Well, they're born knowing that word. <laughs> Would you like me to wash your teddy bear? Oh, no, 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 that, that's quite all right. Um, we had some very bad moments yesterday when Mrs. Tate took her bear to wash. She must have it with her at all times. Oh, how careless of me. It's all she has in the world. I'm very sorry, Lily. Hey, Dad, you're supposed to narrate the program, remember? Of course, we better get going. Uh, Miss Rose, Lily, we have seats for you right over here. And sweetheart, if you'll follow. Sweetheart, are you coming? Yes. Alton, after the program, I really need to talk to you. Oh, boy. M Mr. Rogan, aren't you staying? No, uh, I do not celebrate Christmas. Oh, so you went to the Hanukkah service last week then? No, I do not celebrate Hanukkah. I do not celebrate. What is the point? Now that's the right question, and I have an answer for you. May I have your attention, please? Welcome to the Christmas Eve program here in the Grand Hall on Ellis Island. You all came to America because you needed to change your lives. Well, that meant leaving everything you've ever known and starting over. But I have good news. A long time ago, a small Jewish family left everything they'd ever known and journeyed out in faith. And on that first Christmas night, there was no earthquake or thunderbolt, simply a child's first cry shattering the silence. A child was born, and nothing, nothing would ever be the same.
I know this story, but I do not believe. Oh, Mr. High and Mighty, you don't believe? Does that mean it isn't true? You want to hear a story? Here is a story for you. My papa, he was a watchmaker, but he wanted me to become a rabbi. I went to school where I studied the Torah and learned to write Hebrew. I loved literature and books and learning. You made your father very proud. The highest honor among Jews is to be rabbi, a teacher. But I will never become that. Oh, but why? The more I studied, the more I thought about my own soul. My life is eaten with sins no rabbi should have. Pride, arrogance, and anger. I am guilty of all.
You see, Maki, I know the truth. I am not worthy until I can figure out a way to balance the scales. I am certain God's love does not shine its light on me. Then I've got good news for you, Jacob. Arise, shine, for your light has come. You quote the prophet Isaiah, but do you understand it? All right, tell you what, listen to the story, and I dare you to match everything you hear with the law and the prophets. They knew the truth. In fact, they staked their lives on it. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city in Galilee to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph, who was of the house of David. And the angel said unto her, Rejoice, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You shall conceive and bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus. Hear ye now, O house of David, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called a wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of his government and peace there shall be no end. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And Joseph also went up from Galilee into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. But you, a Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Sleep now, little child, rest your head mother's shoulders close your little eyes your father's here and he will keep you safe while the whole
And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sorely afraid. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Break forth unto singing, ye mountains, for the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the days of Herod the king, there came wise men from the east. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings 
to the brightness of your rising. And the star they saw in the east went before them until it came above where the young child was. When they came into the house, they fell down and worshipped him. They presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The kings shall bring presents. They shall offer gifts. Yes, no, I do not know. Uh, my mind is making connections I cannot believe I never saw before. Oh, what connections? So many things the prophets spoke about point to the Messiah. 
I learned he would come as a king, and not as a baby. But it all connects, doesn't it? Yeshua is the Messiah. But why would he make his coming so poor? He came poor so that everyone, Jews and Gentiles, people of every language and country and situation could call on his name and believe. And that includes you, Mr. Rogan. Are you Margaret Ann McPherson? I am. Have you located my papers? No. I have orders to escort you to the deportation room. There's a ship leaving in one hour. Well, that's it. I'm going back. No, uh, isn't there something? Look, I'm sorry. I have my orders. But I'll give you a moment. But make it quick. Listen to me, Jacob. God's light does shine on you. He came for all men. Do you believe that? This is not the time. Don't be putting God in a box now. Do you think it's just chance that put us both here at the same time? Now all I have is this moment, and I won't see it wasted. But what can I do? Put aside everything you think you know. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Call on his name, and he'll answer. He'll show you great and mighty things that you know not. That is the prophet Jeremiah. Remember that man who pointed to the Statue of Liberty and said, that means I am free. Well, at the base of the statue is a wee poem written by another Jew, Emma Lazarus. She wrote it for the immigrants, but God intends it for the world. Give me your tired, your cruel, your huddled masses yearning to be free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore.
Miss McPherson, your time is up. But how will I know? Will God give me a sign? But God said, I'll put a new spirit in their hearts. That's how you'll know. But you can ask him for a sign. Just don't be shocked when it comes. Goodbye, Mr. Rogan. Maggie, Faith, you are somebody's angel. Mine. Jacob, here, take this cross. It was my Patrick's. And remember, when you see it, this means we are free. I am so glad that Jacob had someone like Maggie to be able to lead him to faith in Jesus Christ. I wonder if you have a friend like that. Well, I'd like to be your friend for a moment and tell you that God loves you. God loves every human being that has ever lived. God loves us, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, with an everlasting love. To me, the greatest verse in all of the Bible is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's John 3, 16. I'm sure maybe you've heard of that. Yes, God loves all of us, every person. But the same Bible that teaches that God loves us also says that God is a holy God who hates sin. He loves us, but he hates our sin, just like we love our children, but we don't love it when they disobey us. And God hates sin because God is holy. So here he is, he loves us, but we're sinners. All of us, the Bible says, have sinned. You say, what in the world is sin? Sin is breaking the laws of God. That's exactly what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse four. Sin is lawlessness, it's breaking the laws of God. Who has done that? Everyone, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages or the just penalty of sin is death. And the Bible says that we are spiritually dead because of our sins. We are dead in our trespasses and in our sins. And the Bible says that sin and that death separates us from God. Isaiah said in Isaiah 59 verses one and two that God's hand is not so short that he cannot save you. Neither is his ear so dull that he cannot hear you but your sins have made a separation between you and your God. So here we are, created by God. God loves us, God wants to fellowship with us, but we're sinners and that sin has separated us from God. What are we to do? Well, God has already provided the solution and that is his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the eternal divine son of God, just as much God as God the Father, just as much God as God the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ from everlasting to everlasting, the eternal Son of God came to this earth, born of a virgin, consequently free from a sinful nature, tempted in all ways like we are, yet he never once yielded to temptation. And even though he was the sinless Son of God, Jesus went to the cross and he died as an atoning sacrifice for you and for me. He shed his blood because the Bible says in Hebrews 9, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Jesus gave his life's blood for you and for me, and he stayed on the cross until he could say, it is 
finished, paid in full. He paid your sin debt. Buddha didn't pay your sin debt. Muhammad didn't pay your sin debt. No one else has. Jesus has, and he offers you the gift of eternal life. He was on that cross, and he died for your sins. They buried him to show that he was truly dead. But then he rose from the dead, and he is alive now. He is alive, and he offers you eternal life. How do you receive it? First of all, you acknowledge that you're a sinner, and you repent of your sin. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Repent means to do an about face, to do a U-turn spiritually by the help of the Holy Spirit. You turn from sin, you turn to God. You don't become sinless, but you have a different attitude towards sin. You turn your back on wanting to sin and you turn to Jesus in faith. So you repent. Secondly, you believe. You believe that Jesus died for your sins. You believe that Jesus really did rise from the dead to give you eternal life. And the Bible says that if you will believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead and you believe that Jesus is the one who saves you, that's what you need to do to be saved. You repent and then you believe and then you receive. You call upon the name of the Lord and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I wonder if you're ready to do that. Some of you are, I believe. You're ready to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I would love to have the privilege of leading you to Christ right now. If you would invite Christ to come into your life, pray something like this right now. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sin. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose from the dead and you're alive. I surrender my life to you and I receive you right now. Save me, Lord Jesus. I call upon you and I ask you to save me this very moment. Wash me and cleanse me and help me to live for you for the rest of my life. And when I die, take me to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe that if you truly repented of your sins, you just didn't mouth some words, but you repented of your sin, put your faith in Christ and called upon him that you're born again. We pray that you'll have a wonderful Christmas season. We pray that you'll walk with the Lord Jesus Christ in the coming years. And we pray that you'll have a good church. If you don't have a good church or if you're visiting churches or if you'd like to know more about Bellevue Baptist Church, why don't you come and visit us here at Bellevue Baptist Church here in Cordova and then also go online at bellevue.org, find out more about our ministry. God bless you and Merry Christmas. An unprecedented event being called the Christmas Truce occurred yesterday when soldiers on both sides of the Western Front laid down their weapons, meeting together in celebration of Christmas. Reportedly, the war-weary soldiers began singing carols, followed by shouted agreements to cease fire. What happened next is impossible, but all reports agree that for several hours, men who were shooting at one another the day before were exchanging gifts, playing games, and sharing pictures of loved ones. Many assisted in laying the fallen to rest. An English officer was heard saying, how marvelously wonderful, yet how strange it was that Christmas, the celebration of love, brought mortal enemies together as friends, even for a day. If this can happen on war-torn fields among sworn enemies, indeed, there may be hope yet for peace on earth, goodwill to men. You were right, Maggie. I got my sign. It praised are you, Adonai. Uh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Birnbaum. Uh, did you hear? It is the most amazing story. Merry Christmas. Everyone did such a marvelous job on Ellis Island yesterday. I'm putting extra candy and fruit in the children's Christmas stockings. I didn't know we had funds for extra things. Uh, we don't. 
but I've decided to have a little bit of faith. Good morning, everyone. We came by to wish everyone a good Christmas and to check on Miss Lily. She's much better. This morning she called me mama. Poor little thing. Hey guys, guess what? I got a train set. One of those electric ones. Excuse us, everyone. Alton, may I have a word, please? Now? Yes, now. You said you had a very important matter to discuss with me. Well, yes, but I thought we could... I do too. You go first. Okay, I was trying to find a way to ask you a very important question. Like when you proposed marriage? Sure. You remember that? A girl never forgets that. You did the sweetest thing. I did? Of course I did. <laughs> what did I do? Alton Randall Jones, are you serious? Actually, I am. I have been thinking about a very big decision. Well, I've been praying about an idea that I've had. Well, I think the Lord may be leading us to... I feel very strongly that we should become, become house, house parents. parents. You too? Why, Why didn't, didn't you tell, tell me? me? Oh, oh, sweetheart. sweetheart. <laughs> well, I'm glad we could help you work that out. Congratulations. Greetings to one and all. Oh, Mr. Livermore, good morning and Merry Christmas. And the same to you, madam. I wouldn't have bothered you today, but this matter is pressing. Oh dear, what have we done? No, hear me, please. You said you pray for Mary. Oh, I didn't think much of it because everyone says that, don't they? But I know you did. The next day, her doctors tried a brand new procedure and she got better immediately. There's a good chance she'll recover. Oh, we're so glad for you. Perhaps she will sing again. Oh, and uh, one thing more. I've been unable to sleep because I canceled your program. And well, here. I could have gotten around those bylaws, but uh, I was so bitter about my wife's illness. And well, let's just say Mr. Scrooge is awake now and it's Christmas day. So thank you very much for your prayers and God bless us everyone. And there's enough money here to run the orphanage for a year. Well, here we are. The blankets are wrapped around the children at St. Joseph's. Italian day school's having a feast. Nine o'clock and all's well. <laughs> Nine o'clock is very late. So, everyone got what they wanted for Christmas, eh? Uh, not everyone. Well, I did. Got a great job and lovely employers and a new friend with eyes the color of an English sky. Oh? Huh? <laughs> He's a little on the quiet side, mind you, but I'll make up for that in spades. Right, Ollie? Oh, yeah, that's not quite right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's retire to the kitchen. Got some tea cakes for you. <laughs> Miss Rose, I have a telegram for you. Come all the way over from France. Nathan. Oh dear, Owen. Miss Rose, may I read the telegram, please? I am safe, miss you terribly. I've been unable to get word through. I'm coming home next week. Here's the part I like. I have great news. I found your sister, and she's coming back with me. Looking for her daughter, lost on Ellis Island. Tell Alton to search the bear. Love always, Nathan. He found your sister. That's wonderful. Yeah, but I don't get that last part. Tell Alton. Search the bear? The bear. The bear. The bear? Oh, I know this. Lily, may I see your bear? How did you know where to find that? My mother used to hide notes in my doll in case I got lost somewhere. 
Nathan knew that if Lily was found, more than likely Alton would know about it since he works on Ellis Island. I belong to Lily Rose Matthews. If found, take me to Miracle Street Orphanage. My Aunt Rose is waiting there for me. Mama, Lillian? <laughs> yes, sweetheart. Your mama has been found, and we will see her very soon. Hey, does it strike anyone else a little odd that there's so much coincidence? 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 These are not coincidence. These are miracles. Stopping a war, finding her sister, answering prayer. The best and only explanation is God did it. Then why is everyone so shockified? This is Miracle Street. All we need is a little bit of faith. Oh, the 